All right, guys, let's talk about the Prism Optic. This is a three times Prism Optic from Primary Arms. And I decided to buy this because of quite a few reviews on the YouTubes. Um, of course, Grand Thumb and other more prolific gun tubers do highly recommend um, Primary Arms. But of course, they're also known to be shills. And of course, these are paid sponsorships. So what they say isn't always the most reliable and trustworthy. And I understand you gotta hustle, you gotta get that bread. But how does the Primary arms three times micro prism actually hold up to some realistic use so to be fair and to be completely um, upfront there are definitely people on YouTube that have used the hell out of their um, micro prisms more than I have but this is more of me um, kind of just experimenting with it playing around with it and using it on multiple different um, systems like multiple different firearms it is currently living on my AR-15 right now but it was previously set up on my FNFAL and that is kind of where it was most problematic so I swapped it off of there so first off um, I have to say with my experience I didn't have like hundreds of rounds through it on the FNFAL and ultimately I really couldn't get to that point for a few reasons. So some of the biggest deterrents to getting this micro prism are, so the biggest drawback to it, much like any other prism optic out there, whether you're thinking about, you know, Trijicon uh, with their ACOGs or something like this micro prism is how close your face has to be to that optic. And I found that more so with the primary arms, micro prisms then even things like ACOGs your face has to be very very close to this optic now one thing that was kind of a downside is shooting 308 this thing can if you aren't watching yourself come back and bite you because of how close you have to be and 308 is not necessarily the most mild cartridge so I do have a few friends that got bit by this scope a little bit because you have to be so darn close to it and once again the recoil being so so to the point where it can come back and bite you. I never really had that issue too much. It did bounce off my, or hit my glasses a few times, but nothing really ever too extreme. The biggest issue that I had with it is that if you plan to use a, um, a micro prism like this, it's almost better to have a fixed stock than a collapsible or telescoping or any type of stock that has any movement to it. Because once you get that scope, in position, um, it is very easy. Once again, there's a field of view that you have to be, you have to be so close to actually get the full field of view within the uh, optic. And if you're not on that point every time, you aren't going to see, once again, as much or anything at all. In addition to, I think other people have talked about this, the optic is very picky and most magnified optics are to an extent picky about lateral shifts. But this optic in particular, if you're even just a quarter of an inch high or quarter inch too low or quarter inch to really either side, you are going to see nothing. You're not going to see anything out of the optic. And that is one of the biggest detractors to me. And because of this how close you have to be to the optic and because of how shallow the field of view can be if you're not perfectly like lined up with this guy it really didn't make a lot of sense for the fnfal and so i moved it over to the ar now here an ar i think is where this optic makes the most sense one because with an ar you can get this optic very far back and you can get it properly to the point where you can actually realistically use it pretty well without too much interference. Now, once again, you do have to be mindful that, you know, any type of side to side play, you're going to lose the optic very quickly, um, or you'll lose the reticle very quickly. So it's not the best like close range typed optic. And even for what I was initially wanting, something that could, you know, work from 50 meters in very well, this optic kind of struggles in those closer um, situations, unfortunately. So keep that in mind. Um, definitely, if, if you are wanting a optic for, like I'd say like 50 yards and out, something like this makes a lot more sense, but 50 yards and in, I'd probably recommend staying away from this for magnified optic. And I think that that 50 yards and in and having a rifle that can go beyond 50 yards, you know, say like out to 200, something like how I wanted my FNFAL to be, I think that that role is filled far more 
easily at least with or far less painfully with an LPVO because once again with an LPVO you can drop it down to a one times magnification and get very clean very fast um, close range shots and then also you can back the mag or you can up the magnification and start backing your range out so I think the LPVO makes a lot more sense for a gun that you want to have a little bit more duality where it can be up close and you know perform well and then also back out to you know like 200 yards once again LPVOs aren't going to be perfect for every situation and circumstance but I think that they hit that mark a lot better than just a standard magnified um, or fixed magnification prism optic that's locked into something like a three times because you're going to really struggle with three times magnification up close and doing any kind of CQB work and it's going to not deliver the most optimal results out at 200 though there are once again other gun tubers that have gotten hits with this very optic out at 600 yards i think it is totally doable but once again not the most realistic and it takes a few shots to get there so keep that in mind take that for what it's worth so what are now they've kind of broken down all the like complaints and the dislikes that i have with the primary arms uh three times micro prism what are some of the good things about this optic so i'd say the the largest most huge the hugest um <laughs> Uh, pros to this are definitely going to be size and weight. Um, unlike an ACOG, this thing is supremely lightweight for, if, especially if you're looking at like just an ACOG without a piggyback, um, just the ACOG, like a three times magnification or a 3.5 magnification versus this, you know, just bare bones with a three times magnification. This thing is so much lighter than something like an ACOG that has fixed magnification. So first off, you're gonna be saving yourself a ton, a ton of weight. In addition to that too, because this is a micro prism, it is also very small. So you can see that it takes up very little real estate. Now, it is kind of a blessing and a curse because with it taking up so little rail space, you do have options for other things on here. You can very easily throw red dots on here for you know close range, but then again, you begin to add weight, which kind of defeats the purpose of a small lightweight optic. And also too, you can't really like aim, you can't like uh, iron sights, backup iron sights with this because of the way it is. It's just not really gonna work. Um, and then also too, because of how picky it is with its eye relief, you're not really going to like, once you get into a spot, it's kind of just locked into that spot. You're not really gonna be able to uh, move it around that much. <clears throat> so keep in mind, those are some of the like advantages, disadvantages. So like, yes, it is very small, it is very lightweight, but you do really have to leave it in its spot. Unlike a red dot where say you have a red dot, you know, back here, but then you wanna add some magnification. So you bump it up and throw a magnifier behind it. Um, this doesn't really have that option. And, uh, <clears throat> So you do have to keep that in mind, or at least be mindful of what you're getting yourself into with this type of optic. And I think it can work. I definitely think that this is more of an AR-15 platform friendly optic than other rifles. Once again, I did technically get it to work on an FNFAL. It did look very weird because once again, the eye relief is so small. I think it's like four, four and a half inches. You have to be right on this optic for it to work or for you to get that full field of view you do really need to be very close to it as you guys can see there hopefully that's about how close you need to be to get a full field of view anything further away you're going to start losing field of view and uh yeah, and that definitely makes it a little bit frustrating and a little bit harder to work around. So I definitely recommend if you do run things like plate carriers, if you run anything like that, definitely get fully kitted out how you're actually gonna run it. Then, you know, shoulder your rifle, really get, you know, get into it and see, can you actually use this optic? in those situations. Now, other pros, as I've been kind of going back to cons a little bit, I do really like the ACSS Raptor. Other people have mentioned it. It's a really great bullet drop compensated typed optic where, uh, especially if you're shooting 5.56 or 308, it gives you not just bullet drop, but also 
um, slight bits of windage as well. So it's a very handy optic or reticle to look through. And I will say, I think everyone that has shot this reticle pretty much instantly likes it. You zero it for the chevron or the top of the chevron and your drop compensation goes from there. So it's a really, really nice optic. And of course it does have a very nice outline on the inside that you can magnify and use hypothetically for close range. Now I definitely say a big hypothetical for close range because this type of optic, I mean, once you get on it, it's good, but it is not the easiest for transitions because obviously you have a fixed three times power. So even if you are looking through your um, non-dominant eye and trying to track your next target, it will be very disorienting because you're moving, you're trying to look at a one time, so to speak, at a one eye and a three times out of the other. Optimally, optimally I would say, um, like others have mentioned in other YouTube videos, you're probably just best realistically just going for some kind of piggyback system and running a red dot either off of this optic or on the side, um, some form of a piggyback um, optic or red dot for close range. I just don't really think that this is going to bring you a lot of success close range. So that's kind of what I think overall of the um, primary arms three times micro prism. It is a decent optic. They are cool. They're very lightweight. They're very compact. There's a ton of different mounts, um, as other people have mentioned, that come in the packaging for these. And that gives you tons of accessibility or accessorizing to meet whatever type of rifle or platform you want to run. So if you do want to run this on something, like I said, like an FNFAL, you can do it. It'll look very weird. It will not be very user friendly, but, um, if you do want to run this on an AR like this, it gives you lots of options as well. So just be mindful, like I said, your eye relief is very, very poor on this optic. And I think others have mentioned that, like I said, it being even worse than something like an ACOG, it's just not very friendly to any type of imperfection. So it's definitely my least favorite thing about it, but overall, it's not a bad uh, optic, and I will say glass clarity and everything um, is pretty darn solid, especially for it being a budget, budget optic. A lot of people compare it directly to the ACOG and understand that while it is the same concept as an ACOG, you know, it's a prism optic, this is something that is three to four times cheaper than an ACOG, so you're going to be getting a product that is three to four times cheaper than ACOG. So the quality is definitely there. I don't, I haven't really noticed any point of impact shifts in it. Um, it's been fine, but uh, understand that like I said, you're getting a cheaper optic. So take that for what it's worth. You know, it's not going to perform like a Night Force or a Trigicon or an EOTech. It's not gonna have the same glass clarity as those. Um, it just, it's a much cheaper optic. So anyways, guys, hopefully enjoyed the video. As always, 